Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and I'm here in Patrick County in Southwest Virginia at a friend's workshop. And in this workshop, my friend today found a copperhead. He had a coil of hose sitting in the corner of the shop, and when he came in today, he looked down and happened to spot this copperhead sitting right on these coils of hose. This is not recommended. You should never try to move a snake yourself. Uh, most people are bitten by snakes when they mess with them or even when they try to kill them. This snake was uh, very carefully by a person who is also a biologist and, and can handle this sort of situation. And he was able to put the snake safely in a container to be re relocated according to Virginia wildlife laws to another location on his property. So this is a great teaching moment. Let's learn some things about copperheads. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. So here I have this fantastic opportunity to teach a little bit about copperheads. And the most important thing I wanna do is to show you how to for certain, for absolutely, be able to identify a copperhead for sure. Personally, I think it has a distinctive tan, pinkish color to it that is just unmistakable. But otherwise, you can look for the markings. So one of the things they say to look for is the hourglass markings on it. And you can see these brown hourglasses if you envision the hourglass going up the side, coming to the narrow point at the top, and going back down the other side. So that's what they mean by looking for the brown hourglass pattern. Another thing people say to look for is the Hershey's Kiss. And if you look at the snake from the side, it looks like a row of Hershey Kisses, but then they're joined on the top. So I don't know if that's a perfect analogy or not, but that's another good one. I find so many people will call me up and tell me they've killed a copperhead and would I like to see it? And every time I've gone to see it, it's always been this snake. What is this? It's a juvenile black snake. And they're commonly mistaken for copperheads. And I just don't see how. And it just devastates me every time I find one killed. So look at this juvenile black snake. First of all, people get confused because they're expecting a black snake to be all black. But when there's juveniles, they have this pattern. And you can see the pattern is broken and there's no hourglasses or Hershey's Kisses on the side. Also look at his head. They will make their head seem triangular to scare you and frighten predators into thinking that they're a venomous snake. So having a triangular head is never a really solid indicator for sure of a venomous snake. Many snakes, when they're afraid or agitated, will shape their heads into a triangle. Notice that this snake's response to danger is to freeze. And that's because millions of years of evolution have created an organism with the perfect camouflage. And this snake just blends right into the background. I'm sure you've seen many times on social media pictures of a forest floor with leaf litter on it. And it says, find the copperhead. And it's so hard to see the copperhead in that background, especially with dappled light. So they're just perfect, perfectly camouflaged. And so their first response of danger is not to attack, it's to freeze in place. And in a crazy, unlikely coincidence, while I was editing this video, my son sent me pictures of this large copperhead in the ivy in his backyard that he stepped over and weed eated over while he was clearing brush around his house in a residential neighborhood in Chattanooga. Look at how amazing that camouflage works. You can see that at this moment, this snake does have vertical slit-like pupils, but sometimes I've seen picture photos of copperheads where their pupils are round. So that's not always a good identifier. The best identifier is to really get to know the snakes and be familiar with the venomous snakes that might occur in your area. And really know how to identify them like you'll be able to do at the end of this video. Copperheads do have this triangular shaped head 
and their nose is kind of blunt and almost comes up to a point. Copperheads are ambush hunters, and with this adaptation to freeze, they'll often be motionless. An ambush hunter finds a good spot to wait for prey to walk by, and they stay there motionless until the prey comes by. And so this is how copperheads are often stepped on or someone puts their hand on them because they freeze and they will not flee like many other snakes will. And again, you can see that this snake is really not aggressive. In fact, when copperheads do bite, it's usually because they've been stepped on or someone's put a hand on them. So even I was surprised by how calm this snake was. And copperheads are really not very aggressive. And again, their behavior, their first response to danger is to freeze and be invisible. And another thing, copperheads, more than a lot of snakes, often bite is a dry bite. They might bite a person and not inject any venom because they don't want to waste it because they're not trying to kill a person for any purpose. They're not going to eat the person. They just want to be left alone. So it will bite as a warning and 25% of copperhead bites have no venom injected. What I found really unusual about this was that it was in this man's shop. Copperheads are native to woodlands and rocky outcrops. So there's lots of rocks and they like to hide under stuff. They're not known to be in uh, people's barns or sheds. Now black snakes, that's a different story. Black snakes are always found in people's barns and sheds, and they seem to cohabitate with humans very well. But I find this very, very unusual for a copperhead to be in a human habitation like this. And this garage did have a lot of mice evidence in it, and he was working on getting rid of those mice and the places that they were hiding out and places they were getting in. Remember, I always said, if you don't want snakes in your barn or shed or in your house, get rid of the mice and the snakes will disappear too. So after taking some video of the snake and looking at it, and personally I do think it is absolutely gorgeous snake, we took it some distance from his shop, still on his property, and released him gently into a habitat not far away. If you relocate wildlife or if you feel you need to, check with your local and state laws. In many areas it is illegal to relocate any kind of wildlife off your property. So always check those laws. And again, as this snake moved off, you can see he's very calm, he's not agitated, he's not aggressive, he's not moving towards us. In fact, he moved a little distance away and just stopped right there. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Nature at Your Door. Go back and look at the difference between the juvenile black snake and the copperhead. Look at those markings so you know the difference between these two snakes. And you know for certainty, if you see a copperhead, you know what it is. And you'll be sure not to mistake another snake as a copperhead. Know your copperhead pattern and color for certainty. So thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door. Remember, if you like what I do on this channel, please subscribe, give me a like, and leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers. And of course, check out my playlist. I cover all kinds of things nature, just about anything that you'll find right outside your door. So thanks for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.